This over here is an RTX 3090 Ti and this over here is an RTX 4019. If you are a creator, you might be wondering which one should I be buying? Because the price difference can be massive. For example, right now there's a holiday season coming up and we recently had a Prime Day deal where I actually saw this 3090 Ti actually go for less than $1,000, where these 4090s right now go for over $2,000. So it's almost twice the price so is it really worth going with the newer flagship or do we get better bang for the buck when we're going with the previous flagship? Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. The the one on the left here is a Zotac RTX 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Holo Back. Holo Black, sorry. I'm always a bit confused with Zotac names. And this is RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. And in terms of the actual size of the cards, if you look at them side by side, the new 4090 isn't that much bigger than the 3090 Ti. One thing I do notice straight away is that the fans are a little bit deeper on the 4090 compared to the 3090. Obviously the design is completely different here as well. And I'm not sure if you agree with me, but the 4090 from Zotac, the newer one, actually reminds me of McLaren designs like this over here that type of thing what you would see like inside the PC case very much reminds me of McLaren uh, design interestingly the 3090 Ti PCB is actually much longer than the 1490 and in terms of thickness the 1490 is maybe slightly thicker in the back we do have three slot cover but it doesn't make the card actually thicker they're roughly about the same size in terms of length they're literally very very similar size if you look at them like that the top point the top point are honestly very very similar so if you look at them side by side the fin stack on the 4090 goes a bit longer whereas on the 3090 is just like the plastic cover that goes further the interesting thing is that the 3090 ti can be used through the nv link which it does have the nv link port in there whereas the 4090 does not have that both of them have exactly the same connector interestingly for some reason Zotac thought that we're gonna like leave ourselves the future upgrade ability and add another 16 pin power connector for this because as you can see this is the power connector there and in here we can have another one on the 4090 i don't see that happening interesting the 4090 has this button over there which i haven't figured out what does it do my guess is that it's a bio switch but usually there's a slider for that i'm not sure what that does if you're looking at the 4090s then this uh, zotac 4090 actually has very very different design compared to the other 4090s the other 4090s have a more kind of squared out design but if you do like something different then you can see that this 4090 is like smooth corners and everything seems to be smooth like even the back plate cover here is all rounded when we lie them flat this way then we can see that the 4090 is slightly uh, thicker. Another interesting thing that separates these two is the power cables that come with them. The 3090 Ti, which comes with this power cable on the left, has only three A-pin PCIe power connectors, whereas the 4090 has four. But also the 4090 has these extra four connectors on the top, which just give them like a ground, extra ground, so that the card would actually know how many PCIe you know, power cables are plugged in. But when we look at the power consumption in a moment, it's very interesting that actually it's the other way around what you would think that the 4090 with four pins would consume more power than the uh, 3090 Ti. So then let's have a look at the specs first of all. One thing that we do see a difference here is that the process it has changed and the 4090 uses much smaller process node, four nanometers compared to the eight nanometers on the 3090 Ti. We have 52.4% more CUDA core Cores, TMUs, tensor cores and RT cores. The memory type is actually the same and both of them run the same GDDR6X memory and both of them have 24 gigabytes of it. So they're pretty much exactly the same. Interestingly, 
just to compare the specs and just to add something to the specs the 1490 nvidia had to like mention that the memory bandwidth for some reason is slightly faster at 1018 compared to the 1080 gigabytes per second and the tdp on both of them is 450 watts the msrp price for the 1390 ti was 2100 for this Zotac model. For this Zotac 1490, it was 1599. But interestingly, that's where this market has completely changed now. All of these 1490s right now go for more than 2000. They're like 2100, 2200, 2300, or you can even pick them up 2800 and so on. So the pricing is all over the place. But if I looked at the price, what you can, you know, roughly get this uh, 1494, you can get it right now for about 2200, 2300, something like that. I highly recommend you go check out the latest pricing in the description below uh, because you might get one on a massive deal or there might be holiday deals on. So if you check out the links, click on all of the shops that the link gives you so you can pick your favorite shop or click on all of the ch shops so you can make sure that none of the other shops will give you like a better price just because they sell it somewhere else or they're running with like a different deal so basically it just gives you an option to choose the shop you want to and get the best deal for you and this 3090 ti now goes for around nine hundred dollars which is actually quite a lot about a month ago or six weeks ago this was going about 1200 1100 so there's something going on in the market it's about all over the place i think that nvidia is holding back slightly on the stock of the 40 series to actually push the price of the 30 series just because then they don't have to give them that much rebate of, of all of the actual card manufacturers or resellers because they obviously have bought them for a much higher price than what they're selling this for i think that's what's happening have you seen jay's two cents video on this go check it out so if you're looking at the pricing currently in the market then the 1490 is about 15.9 percent more expensive than the 3090 ti now that is if the 3090 ti comes with the 1899 price tag but i think you're gonna be able to get it much cheaper by the time this video is gonna be released so check it out in the description below for my test bench setup then i am using the i7 12700 cpu for motherboard i'm using asus b660 creator wi-fi motherboard that's the pro app motherboard for ram we're using two times 32 gigabytes kingston fury beast rgb at 3600 megahertz cl18 the cooler is deep cool castle ex 360 white cooler the case is a fantex p600s without panels so it's basically all empty case for psu we're using asus rog thor 1200 watt power supply we're using windows 11 21 h2 and on the screen you can see the windows and driver details first of all power consumption and here's where we see something very interesting now this is very very synthetic power draw kind of test where we're running Fermark and seeing how much power we're running or pulling actually from the card. The 4090 is actually 7.8% more efficient or pulls less power at 415 watts compared to the 450 watts on the RTX 3090 Ti. In terms of the GPU attempts after about 30 minutes or sometimes less depending how long it takes for the actual temperature to plateau so it's not gaining any more or going any lower, but it's just reached its, you know, thermal capacity, basically. The 4090 is 7% lower temperature. The hotspot is 10% lower. So it is actually running cooler and uses less power, which is very, very interesting. Bear in mind, these stats are over ambient. When we're looking at Geekbench 5 GPU test, we can see that the 4090 kind of stacks up with what we saw in the spec sheet, that we're about 54.8% better in the CUDA score, 54.6% better in the OpenSeal score, and about 25.8% better in the Vulcan score. So it kind of lines up over there. But now the real world applications, if you're a photo, video, or 3D creator, First of all, Photoshop. The 4090 is about 3.7% better in the overall score, but the GPU score is about 3.4% better. Interestingly, the general score equates to about 10.5% faster and the filter score is slightly slower. So we do gain a little bit of performance in Photoshop with the 4090, but nothing significant. And the same thing is for Lightroom Classic. I didn't even put the benchmarks in there because the, the benchmark kind of difference is within the margin of error. The GPU does accelerate certain things like some of the you know work in the development tabs of the 
actual photo and so on but there is no real performance difference between these that you can measure if you're a photographer basically these cards are overkill but video editing tells us a slightly different story in adobe premiere pro we can see that the extended overall score is 4.8 percent faster and the standard overall score is 9% faster. Interestingly, for some reason, the extended export score is actually slower on the 4090 compared to the 3090 Ti. But the standard live playback is about 10% better and the effect score is 14.6% better. But the GPU accelerated effects really on their own are about 8.3% better on the 1490. In After Effects we can see that the overall score isn't that much different and the GPU score is only 1.7% different. Now you might do something in After Effects that really uh, utilizes more of the GPU power then it kind of makes sense you know to go with the higher ones but most of the cases people in After Effects who use that don't see that big of a difference between these two cards. DaVinci Resolve now this is a program that loves a fast GPU and can actually utilize it. The 1490 is 17% faster in the extended overall score and 15% faster in the standard overall score. Interestingly, the 8K media score and GPU scores are 31 and 34% faster. So in DaVinci Resolve, you can expect up to 34% better speeds on the 1490. But now the 3D applications, which really lets this graphics card run its pace and really show how capable they are. First of all, V-Ray. The 1490 is 88.5% faster and the RTX score on V-Ray is 87.8% faster, which is very close to double the performance as the 3090 Ti, which is just insane. Moving on to Blender, in the monster scene, we are 113% faster on the Zota card compared to this 3090 Ti, which is ridiculous performance, okay? The junk shop scene is 70% faster and the classroom scene is 103% faster. So basically in Blender, we're getting double the performance on the 4090 compared to the 3090 Ti. And in Octane Bench, we can see 74% increase in the rendering performance on the 4090 compared to the 3090 Ti. Now there's one more thing we want to mention that for video editors often can be confusing or at the same time marketing trick kind of from Nvidia, which are the encoders or media engines inside the GPUs. There are encoders and decoders. If you don't know what they are, is encoders put video together and then decoders dissolve the video for you so it plays it back basically. So one is putting video together, which is encoding the video, and then decoding is playing back video. The 1490 mentions dual video encoders and AV1 support. So basically, the 1490 does have two encoders inside that can put the video together. So if you're exporting something from the likes of DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, then it can use those encoders in there with the H.264 and 5 and AV1 if you're doing that type of export. If you're exporting to RAW or some kind of other format, then these might not be able to support that because not every single codec is supported on the hardware acceleration so you can get up to two times faster exporting performance on the 1490 when you're exporting these types of codecs that are supported on the hardware acceleration because on the 3090 ti we don't have av1 support and we only have one encoder there and they're like previous generation encoder and that's why it doesn't support av1 there but the decoders, the ones that actually play video back, so whether it's um, H.264 or 5 or something like that, some of the codecs in your video editing application support hardware acceleration on these decoders for the likes of a 10-bit 420 H.264 codec. If you're using that type of codec, then it's hardware accelerated and the timeline is very, very smooth. The thing is, the decoders of these graphics cards are exactly the same on both of them. So if you're planning to get the 4090 to get much smoother timeline performance in your video editing application, then that's really not gonna happen because they use exactly the same decoders. You do see better GPU effects performance, but not the timeline video playback 
scores. But there is another thing which is for streamers. Let's say if you're streaming content uh, for YouTube or something like that, then the AV1 encoding on the 4090 is absolutely game changer. Just because the AV1 codec is 40% more efficient than the H.264 codec. So let's say that previously you were able to max out your internet upload speeds to YouTube or to uh, Twitch or whatever, you know, streaming service you're going to be using at, let's say, 3000 kilobits per second, right? And now with the AV1, if you switch that codec from H.264 to AV1, for 3000 kilobits per second, you get much better uh, video quality from your actual GPU because the AV1 is much more efficient. So basically, you're going to be uploading exactly the same data rate, but the video is going to be much better quality just because the video codec is more efficient and it can just put the video together more efficiently. You know, you've got more texture, it just looks better, which is a huge, huge thing if you're limited by the internet speed and so on. But then, in conclusion, which GPU is better and is it worth getting one over the other? If you are a 3D artist, then obviously there is no question for you there. Get the 4090, you're going to see a much better performance. It's absolutely insane. It runs cooler, uses less power and gets you double the performance. That's the end of the story. If you're a photographer, none of these cards are really a good pick for you and you should be going with much, much smaller and invest the money on the CPU and more RAM because that's really where you're gonna see more performance difference. For video editing, now that's the most complicated answer I can give you because depends what you're gonna be doing. If you really are using AV1 you know, workflow, then the Nvidia card is obviously the choice for you. If you're using DaVinci Resolve and you know this is your professional workflow, then the 4090 kind of makes sense as well. If you're using Premiere Pro and After Effects, for example, then the 3090 Ti is a much better bang for your buck. So I'd say for most people, I believe the 3090 Ti is a much better bang for the buck, especially because I'm expecting the prices to go further back down. Right now, there's some kind of spike just before the holiday season, but I do think they're going to drop it down just to show the nice, you know, cheap price tag again for the holiday sale season. So I do think you can pick this one up much cheaper than what I've actually used the price for in this video. So check out the latest pricing in the description below for both of these cards. And if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC then go check out my best bank for buck create the pc build guide in the description below where you can configure it to your budget and get the best pc for the money go check it out down below thanks guys for watching subscribe and i'll see you in the next one